Our world is always moving forwards, continuously creating and producing new innovative products and technologies. But our modern research and developments extend beyond our latest phone model or the newest medicine breakthrough. Some of the most fundamental research we carry out today focuses on unveiling past mysteries and rediscovering the lives of societies who shaped the world as we know it. From ancient societies, traditions and rituals to places we did not know existed, there are many unanswered questions within our history books. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three recent discoveries that have provided us with a glimpse into human history. The Karankas Impact Event The Karankas Impact Event refers to the fall of the Karankas chondritic meteorite on the Earth's surface. The meteorite fell near the village of Karankas in Peru. The location of the fall was close to the Bolivian border and Lake Titicaca. The fall created a small crater impact on the clay soil and scorched earth around its location. A local official named Marco Lemash observed that boiling water started coming out of the crater and particles of rock and cinders were found nearby, as fetid, noxious gases spewed from the crater. The surface impact was above 3,800 meters. The diameter of the meteorite is about 13.5 meters, with a depth of 4.5 meters. The crash occurred on September 15, 2007, around 11.40 in the local time of Peru. The meteorite was chondritic, meaning it is a stony meteorite that has not been modified by either melting or differentiation in nature. Following the crash, a group of geologists working with the Peruvian Geophysics Institute released a report. Immediately after the confirmation by the Peruvian astrophysicists on the 20th of September, X-ray laboratory analysis was carried out at the Mayo San Andres University Faculty of Geological Sciences in La Paz, Bolivia. They subsequently published a report of their findings on analysis of some of the small samples recovered from the material around the site of impact. The report said that some minerals were detected in the sample collected. Some of the minerals detected on analysis included iron, nickel, cobalt and traces of iridium. All of these elements detected were typical compositional elements of meteorites. Another vital detail that were published alongside the report was that the quantitative proportions of silicon, aluminium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and phosphorus discovered in those samples were incompatible with the composition of rocks that we have on the surface of our Earth. The meteorite was subsequently accepted as a standard meteorite after it was officially certified by the Meteoritical Society. The certification was carried out by a team of scientists working at the University of Arizona. It was described as an ordinary chondrite, an H. chondrite breccia, containing clasts of petrologic types 4 to 5. The formal classification is H. 4 to 5. It was also determined that the meteorite had experienced a considerable level of shock before ultimately hitting the Earth. More analysis was carried out by NASA, Japanese and British researchers in which they came up with their findings that were backed up by data. The findings were similar. Sometime after the impact, some of the villagers who approached the site of impact suddenly developed some forms of sickness that could not be explained from the normal observable facts initially. The villagers developed a wide array of symptoms as a result of the sickness which initially was unknown. About two days later after the impact, some Peruvian scientists confirmed to the Peruvian public and the world at large that there had been a meteorite crash. Their confirmation helped to silence widespread speculation that it may have been a geophysical rather than a celestial event. Consequently, even after Peruvian scientists seemed to have intervened, further information concerning the cause of the mysterious sickness that struck some of the members of the community was still unknown. But on further analysis and evaluation, it was discovered that the groundwater in the local area contained arsenic compounds, and the illness was subsequently believed to have been caused by arsenic poisoning incurred when residents of the area inhaled the vapour of the boiling arsenic-contaminated water. Mungo Man and Woman Ancient skeletons help us to piece together the long history of our ancestors and allow us to plot out the evolutionary timeline of our species. But no skeletons have garnered quite the attention from the scientific community 
like the Mungo Man and Mungo Woman. Found in the dry, deserted bed of the evaporated Lake Mungo, the discoveries were kick-started by Jim Bowler with the University of Melbourne in 1969. Lake Mungo is located in southeastern Australia and is around 760 kilometers or 470 miles due west of Sydney. The lake is also one of 17 included in the World Heritage Willandra Lakes region. The lake dried up around 14,000 years ago, but it was in 1968 that the significance of the lake became clear when Jim Bowler managed to uncover the skeleton of an Aboriginal Australian woman. Carbon dating showed that the skeleton was 40,000 years old, making them the oldest remains to have ever been found in Australia, and demonstrating that humans had been on the continent for longer than we had originally believed. The bones of the Mungo woman were also burnt, which also makes the discovery the earliest known example of cremation and ceremonial burial anywhere in the world. Amazingly, in 1974, Bowler found another skeleton, this time belonging to a male. The Mungo Man was similarly found to have come from the same period as the previous skeleton. Since the massive discovery, even more human bones and cultural objects have been discovered in the crescent-shaped sand dunes of Lake Mungo. The reason why this area is so significant to archaeologists is because it offers a detailed fossil record of Aboriginal life in the region. Scientists are able to observe how people adapted to the changing climate of the day as well as the drying of Lake Mungo. Some of the other archaeological finds include stone tools, food waste, and fireplaces. Amazingly, in 2003, a series of footprints left by the Willandra people were discovered and were dated to being 20,000 years old. Today, the Mungo discoveries are an invaluable archaeological resource, as well as a significant cultural and spiritual reference point for Aboriginal Australians, in a modern context, we can see that descendants from the country's original inhabitants, such as the Bakanji, Nyampa, and Muti Muti people, have an intrinsic right and claim to the Australian continent. Mungo Man and Woman Ancient skeletons help us to piece together the long history of our ancestors and allow us to plot out the evolutionary timeline of our species but no skeletons have garnered quite the attention from the scientific community like the Mungo Man and Mungo Woman. Found in the dry, deserted bed of the evaporated Lake Mungo, the discoveries were kick-started by Jim Bowler with the University of Melbourne in 1969. Lake Mungo is located in southeastern Australia and is around 760 kilometers or 470 miles due west of Sydney. The lake is also one of 17 included in the World Heritage Willandra Lakes region. The lake dried up around 14,000 years ago, but it was in 1968 that the significance of the lake became clear when Jim Bowler managed to uncover the skeleton of an Aboriginal Australian woman. Carbon dating showed that the skeleton was 40,000 years old, making them the oldest remains to have ever been found in Australia and demonstrating that humans had been on the continent for longer than we had originally believed. The bones of the Mungo woman were also burnt, which also makes the discovery the earliest known example of cremation and ceremonial burial anywhere in the world. Amazingly, in 1974, Bowler found another skeleton, this time belonging to a male. The Mungo man was similarly found to have come from the same period as the previous skeleton. Since the massive discovery, even more human bones and cultural objects have been discovered in the crescent-shaped sand dunes of Lake Mungo. The reason why this area is so significant to archaeologists is because it offers a detailed fossil record of Aboriginal life in the region. Scientists are able to observe how people adapted to the changing climate of the day, as well as the drying of Lake Mungo. Some of the other archaeological finds include stone tools, food waste, and fireplaces. Amazingly, in 2003, a series of footprints left by the Willandra people were discovered and were dated to being 20,000 years old. Today, the Mungo discoveries are an invaluable archaeological resource, as well as a significant cultural and spiritual reference point for Aboriginal Australians. In a modern context, we can see that descendants from the country's original inhabitants, such as the Bakanji, 
Nyampa and Muti Muti people have an intrinsic right and claim to the Australian continent. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.